Hello, it's Scott Manley here and welcome to part two of Kerbal Space Program Serious Business. That was the winner from the naming competition, Serious Business, indeed, because we are playing with real scale solar system. However, we are still able to use the good old fashioned Kerbal techniques of, uh, well, basically science farming. Uh, we had this jet which we took off and found science in the grasslands. So an obvious next step was to go out and get more science. Now, I didn't know what I could find nearby, but I did see a bunch of water. So I flew out over it and, you know, periodically I was checking science to find where the beach was. This, of course, has made me realize that I should really have Kerbal Engineer installed so that I can actually see the biomes. But nevertheless, we collect science out uh, not so far from the from the space center and then send ourselves back. The idea being, of course, that we can test landing because we never really did a proper landing last time due to the, the control freezing situation. I had some discussion with uh, people that are the experts in realism overhaul and they uh, actually sent me a mod manager fix which I couldn't remember. So instead I just want to demonstrate what's going on here. If I throttle to below 50%, Watch up in the top right, electric charge is still totally positive, but as I'm flying, I'll eventually lose control here. If it goes below 50%, that's when the problems happen. Watch the flaps. See, the flaps, when they are oscillating, that means that something is happening. Obviously, it means my aircraft isn't perfectly well balanced. And There we go. See that? So, the electric charge in the top right doesn't go to zero. It's not like there isn't electric charge in the aircraft. There's some other issue. And if we right click on the cabin, you can see it says state, not enough electric charge. But look, there's thousands of electric charges up in it, there in the corner. Can't you count? Clearly the Bonanza it can't see numbers that are smaller than 7200. At which point it decides that it has no electrical power. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's some weird bug. I think it might be. I think somebody suggested that it's something to do with the engine generator producing negative output. Anyway, the fix is you turn off the engine and you leave the throttle at 100% and then everything works. We are using electrical power, uh, but we have plenty of it and it doesn't concern us that we are running out or anything. So now it's just a case of landing next to the runway, gliding in ever so carefully, of course. Now, I'm not going to try landing on the runway because the runway is incredibly rough, but to try and at least get that bonus for recovering on the runway, I'm going to land just next to it and then hopefully roll the aircraft onto it. It actually flies relatively well. I mean, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this aircraft. It is not the smoothest flying creation I've ever made by any means. But uh, it is surprisingly good for how few pieces there are and how I've never actually worked with most of these pieces. There we go, just flaring and trying to put the wheels on the ground. And we have touchdown. See, verifiable, good old-fashioned three-point aircraft touchdown. Now, when we bring the speed down enough, we can stick it on the runway, but we don't need to, we don't need to see that. So what else was going on? Well, I performed another mission. Yes, science spam. What could possibly go wrong now that we've figured out everything, right? Well, we go out much further this time. We go out all the way out over the water so we can collect more science. We can get pressure data, we can get temperature data, we can get crew cabin and telemetry. The biological sample does not give me any new data. Anyway, now that we have plucked that bounty of science from above Neptune's head, we can head back to the Kerbal Space Center, or actually it's Kennedy Space Center, right? Anyway, um, as it happens, throttling at 100%, something strange and unexpected happens. What? What the heck? Uh, uh, okay, stabilize, stabilize, get this thing. Okay, we're plummeting towards the ground, okay. Okay, we've lost our uh, our control surfaces on the tail. This is not good because normally most aircraft will lose control when you do this. How did that happen? Hold on. It exploded due to overheating. All of them exploded due to overheating. They didn't show any temperature bars or anything. 
Um, well, um, it appears I'm not yet dead, and so I shall do my darndest to actually land this safely. Thankfully, we do actually have the parachute for the landing. Yeah, the engine is hot because it's running at full temperature, and maybe the tailplane was attached to it? That still doesn't explain why it exploded on its own. I think that uh, there may be a bug there. Who knows? But right now I'm trying to con uh, trying to rescue this thing, trying to keep it under control. If it's, if this thing flips or starts to spin out, I need to deploy that parachute very quickly because I'm only a few hundred meters up. And I'm pretty sure that the deployment time of the parachute will be insufficient. Okay, I need to slow down as well, so we're going to cut the engine. And yeah, I've got roll control. I've got zero yaw control, but it does actually seem to be quite stable. I just can't seem to make it point along my velocity vector here. I think I'm just going to deploy the parachute when I get over dry land. For no reason... I don't know. I, I could have done it over the ocean, but it feels good to actually maintain control of this thing without a tailplane. Okay, now get ready to deploy that chute. Go. Okay, slow everything down. Keep control. Oh, there we lift up. Bit of a spin, stomach churning sk uh, spin there for Tatiana um, Istominia. Okay. And, oh, well, nice touchdown. Anyway, landed on the wheels, didn't break anything. And the brakes do work. Well, I bet you she's happy to be back on uh, safe on the ground after that in, well, mid air disaster. Let's get her out here. Maybe we can plant a flag to commemorate this rescue. Whoa! Oh, wow. Ah, it appears that we had a soft landing because we landed in a swamp or something like that. Yes. Uh, oh, wait, no, we don't actually have the ability. We can do an EVA report, which gets us zero science. So much for that. Let's recover this and see how much science we actually have. Okay, so we currently have eight science, uh, nine science, which is disappointingly one point short. But she didn't actually have any science on her. No, all the science was actually in the vehicle. Pliny the Younger, or Pliny, sorry, Pliny the Younger. <laughs> ah, he had five science on board. He, she, uh, Pliny, I guess, is a, pl is a plane and it's a boy in this case. Okay, so we should be able to unlock another one of these tech nodes. We have... Mature supersonic flight, early avionics, which gets us all the sciencing that we could ever need for at least an early space program. X-ray detectors and uh, seismometers and things like that, Geiger counters. So mature supersonic flight, I will wait until we actually have supersonic flight. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we're just going to get early construction because I don't know if any of these parts are really that interesting. Especially since most of them aren't actually part of realistic progression. Oh wait, and I only needed five science. Like, I could have been researching this ages ago. Instead, I wasted all my time trying to get more science than I actually needed. Should actually be paying attention to these things. Still, the next node up from here actually does start to give us useful items. And I shall make a point of trying to get to it. And... Also note the time to research these. Uh, I had been running my clock in Kerbal time, which meant six hours day, six hour days. So dividing that, of course, by four, or dividing the research times by four, gave us a much more reasonable time to research. Okay. Now, another thing we can do. Every, all the other biomes, as far as I can tell, are out of range. I looked at the biome map, but. What you can do is switch launch sites. So I can go to Vandenberg, which is on the west coast. It's used by NASA for polar launches, which is, of course, very important for um, Earth observation satellites and things like that. So Vandenberg launches a lot of spy satellites, let's say, and a lot of weather, low-altitude observing satellites and things like that. So Vandenberg... Uh, sits next to a different biome in this case. So what I did was I basically went out to Vandenberg, set up the aircraft, made some modifications, for example, taking those aircraft wings and choosing not to attach them to the very, very hot engine. Of course, then still using the um, using the adjustability, the adjustment stuff, the adjustment bureaus, the adjustment tools to make sure that they are sitting far enough back and the whole aircraft is sufficiently stable. So this is 
Well, this is still Pliny the Younger, but it's perhaps uh, Pliny the Younger Mark II. I didn't even bother simulating this, because I figured that all the numbers were green on the FAR analysis. And sure enough, we get air airborne, even on that terrible, terrible runway. And we can almost immediately, well, not quite yet, but I think we just have to cross this little channel and we shall be able to start sciencing the heck out of another biome. Wow, those that texture uh, Z-fighting is very, very, very annoying. If, if the developers of Realism Overhaul could fix that, they would have my eternal gratitude. Okay. Anyway. And so we can finally get our science from here. Which is the Highlands according to this. Great, let's collect stuff from the Earth's Highlands. Although not the Highlands that I am familiar with. I will point out the real Vandenberg does not have a body of water between the base and the rest of California. I have no idea... Um, you know, if there's a way to fix that. But, uh, yeah, it is one of the less realistic parts of Realism Overhaul. I mean, obviously, Realism Overhaul doesn't just cover uh, the parts and the aircraft and everything and the pieces and the physics and the aerodynamics. It covers having Earth as somewhat semi-realistic. Anyway, sure enough, easy enough to land this new variation. So we're good on that, although it does take a little more effort to bleed off speed. I'll be glad when I get air brakes. Okay, so obviously I can't fill a whole episode with me farming science from every airbase. So let's actually do some contracts. We have X-Planes, which is a slightly higher altitude. You know what? I could make that in my regular plane. Uh, so I should actually take that. But I really want to do something experimental, and breaking the sound barrier sounds like a suitably bold goal for this boldly going space program thing. It's boldly going somewhere, and in this case it's going to boldly go faster than the speed of sound. Okay, so actually what we've got here is a series of simulations. The simulations are part of Kerbal construction time. It means that you co it costs about a hundred funds to actually do each of these simulations and well the uh, let me test the aircraft launch system because fundamentally the aircraft launch system proved to be the hardest thing <laughs> obviously the core of this aircraft is based around the x1 however we didn't have a convenient b29 to carry it up to altitude and launch it so instead, I had to come up with some way to launch it from the runway. Which, uh, well, the runway was terribly unsmooth, so instead I thought, let's try rolling it off the runway first. That will work excellently, except when it doesn't. Oh, yes, it certainly doesn't. Wing's gone, another wing gone. I should probably just give up. Pilot gone. In a moment of brilliance, I did decide to turn the aircraft around because this direction on the runway is actually smoother and the lip that is useful for lifting off is really, really close. Unfortunately, um, yeah, the plane still suffered from not being able to fly. I continued tweaking thrust levels here, trying to make sure that perhaps I would get up to speed and then fire off this engine. But then sometimes the whole thing would spin out of control and every now and then the parachute would actually save me. <laughs> In very rare occasions the parachute was useful. Given the short runway, uh, adding more Tiny Tim boosters seemed like a good plan here so I slung a pair, one under each wing, fired those up and then proceeded to once again destroy my aircraft. <laughs> oh dear, yes, I should have ditched the parachute long before that. Whoa, dear, 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 dear. Ah, well, at least he survived that one. Oh no, never mind. This is the beauty of simulations. It lets you, me show all that stuff from the testing and still have it part of the game. Anyway, this is what I finally decided to use. Just raw power of four Tiny Tim boosters boosting the whole thing vertically, ditching these, and, well, as it happened, I had to pull over the top here and start to roll out of this. Due to a minor error in control mapping, I was not able to roll and pitch at the same time. So this initial launch maneuver was 
rather delicate to say the least. But, yeah, once we got over that, we were free and we were starting to climb indeed. So now we begin our long climb to altitude where we will break the speed of sound. Yes, uh, new me here, so the plan was we're going to go for 20,000 because we've already got 5,000, so 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. I think that was possible, that was my original plan. Also, you'll notice that every now and then the launch structure just randomly appears. Now we could call that a bug, or we could just say that Vadim Grekov is suffering from some sort of vibration and induced hallucinations. Or perhaps we could come up with the Kerbal version of the Blue Book files. I honestly don't know if that will be a job for old me or new me, it will just depend on when inspiration strikes. Anyway, back to old me. And we're gonna beat 15 kilometers, 15 kilometers, so that should be- oh! There is another one of those strange hallucinations. No doubt he will be interrogated afterwards for this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is when my Apple app starts to approach 20 kilometers, I am just going to turn off stability control and let it fly in a kind of gravity turn. And hopefully there will be enough thrust left. Now let's unlock this front node. And I think it's time for us to start that gravity turn. There, look, our altitude, 20 kilometers. If nothing else, we'll at least exceed 20 kilometers. The question is, do I have enough thrust to make it through the sound barrier and possibly beyond? 320, 300, 330. So we're definitely going Mach 1, but the record requirement is 350. 350! And we are really starting to pick up speed here. 20 kilometers, we're going horizontal. 400 meters per second? Yeah, 400. We get 400 meters per second. No new science at this altitude, unfortunately. It will just be for the glory. I feel a need. A need for speed. 480, 490, 500 meters per second, and we are almost burned out. 530, 530 meters per second is where we will top out. And from here... Now the question is, can I, do I have enough energy to fly this thing back to base? Well, old me didn't know, but of course I have enough energy. It's actually got a lot of altitude. And other than being a terribly unstable aircraft due to its stubby wings and design put together by somebody that really barely understands aerodynamics, it did, when uh, pointed in the right direction, actually fly relatively well. Indeed, we were so high that the problem was we ended up coming down with far too much velocity. So I bled off speed with some hard turns and now it's back to old me. Oh, you know, I'm so well lined up, I'm almost tempted to try landing this, but I'm just going to deploy the chute and put myself delicately on the runway here. Whoa! Pitching up, pitching up, doing the whole backflip but I hope I land on the feet. Okay, there we go. Wheels. No, we don't want to land on the engine. That's explosive. Land on the wheels. 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 Stay in the wheel. Okay, so I need to move that parachute f uh, backwards a little. And on the wheels. Excellent. No damage at all. That was a highly successful mission there from Vadim Grekov, the fastest Kerbal on this planet Earth. And with that speed record shattered, it's surely time to bring an end to this episode, and then next episode we can perhaps get back to building those epic rockets. But until then, I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.